Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm very excited to see so many participants in this International Quantum Summer Summit. I'm Richard Reeder, Vice President for Research at Stony Brook University here in New York. Uh, and I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you participating in the conference today. I don't need to tell all of you that quantum is at the forefront of global research priorities now. Here in the US, quantum information science figures as a priority for several federal funding agencies, all of which are expected to receive unprecedented increases in funding, and importantly with bipartisan support in both houses of Congress. At Stony Brook, we're very fortunate to have a strong focus in several key areas such as quantum materials, networking, computing, and quantum sensing. We also recognize that advances in quantum R&D will require innovative strategies to support workforce development, the so-called quantum smart workforce. And our close relationship with Brookhaven National Laboratory, as well as with the Air Force Research Lab and several industry partners, some of which are in our own incubators right here on campus, all position us to continue to be at the forefront of quantum innovation. Let me take this opportunity to introduce the conference organizers. This conference is led by SUNY Distinguished Professor, Dr. Dmitry Karzaev. He's a faculty member in our Department of Physics and Astronomy, and also a joint appointment with Brookhaven National Lab. Dr. Karzaev is leading Stony Brook's effort in the Department of Energy funded National Quantum Institute called Co-Design Center for Quantum Advantage, or C2QA, which is led by Brookhaven National Lab. Dr. Kurzaev's own research focuses on the interface between quantum information and condensed matter physics. He's assisted in organizing the conference by our Office of Proposal Development and by the School of Professional Development. And for those of you interested, the participation in this workshop will earn each of you a digital badge in quantum information science and technology. Before Professor Karzaev walks us through the conference schedule, I'd like to invite our provost, Dr. Paul Goldbart, to make some remarks. Dr. Goldbart is a prominent theoretical physicist and a leader in the area of quantum information and condensed matter physics. Paul, would you like to make some remarks? I would. Um, many thanks, uh, Rich. Um, it's a pl pleasure for me too to offer a warm welcome to the participants in this year's International Quantum Summer Summit. And it's a pleasure as well to express my grat gratitude to our summit chair, Dmitry Karzaev, for all the creativity and hard work he's put into planning and running this event. Uh, I think the agenda looks spectacular. Now, I've only been at Stony Brook for a few months, but I was delighted to learn that Stony Brook hosted the Quantum Immersion Conference two years ago, bringing together nearly 300 participants from across the country. That event resulted in new collaborations at the New York State and national scale, including the DOE-supported National Quantum Institute that you just heard about, C2QA, as well as new collaborations with the Air Force Research Lab in Rome, New York. It would be terrific if this year's event had that kind of impact. Well, I must tell you that I'm truly delighted to have the chance to contribute a few words of my own this morning. And I hope you won't mind if I get a little personal and tell you about a love affair of mine, a love affair with quantum mechanics, which thrives to this day. I can't say it was love at first sight. In high school and in my first year in college, I was fed an unsatisfying mix of the Bohr model and some diluted form of wave mechanics. But then at the end of that first year, the summer of 1979, the romance began to take shape as two textbooks found their way into my hands, one by Paul Matthews, the other by Stephen Gasiorowicz. 42 years later, I can still recall the thrill of being on vacation at the beach in the south of France, obsessively reading Matthews and Gasiorowicz, poring over every single word, every single equation. And I can still recall the rush that came with grasping the core ideas of observables as Hermitian operators, non-commutativity, eigenvalues, measurements, and all that, and barely being able to wait to get back to London to buy a copy of Paul Dirac's Principles of Quantum Mechanics. I still have my copy 
autographed by Dirac right here in front of me, which I devoured. From then, it was only a handful of years until I had my dream assignment to teach the two semester graduate quantum mechanics sequence at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, which I did with delight many times, often to large classes. Well, looking back, even though I adored it, the material I chose to teach was pretty conventional. The formalism of quantum mechanics, including some path integrals, applications to atoms and crystals, spin and angular momentum, much too much on the Wigner-Eckhart theorem, some relativistic quantum mechanics, second quantization, and the rudiments of quantum field theory. There was only a touch of Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, and John Bell. And for some reason, which I don't now recall, I was particularly fond of landau zener tunneling, and my poor students had to struggle their way through the asymptotics of parabolic cylinder functions to extract the tunneling rate. Let me publicly apologize for that. Well, the revolutionary character of the quantum story was certainly present in my courses. And then, as now, I expressed amazement that the human mind was capable of divining quantum mechanics and that I had the good fortune to be born at the right time to relish it. But as I said, my choice of material was pretty conventional. conventional. And my lectures mostly focused on questions that one might ask of the classical world, but answers that quantum mechanics furnished for them. It certainly wasn't the approach taken, say, by Asher Perez's book on quantum theory, which I might adopt now. Others may have been thinking more deeply about the quantum world, quantum mechanics as opportunity. I was still thinking of quantum mechanics much as I loved it, especially direct transformation theory. I was still thinking of quantum mechanics as necessity. And then came Peter Shaw's 1994 paper, Algorithms for Quantum Computation and it changed everything, motivating a generation and much more. Uh, reflecting on the topics that this, summer will that this summit will focus on, never did I dream in the 1980s when I was first teaching about the quantum world that we would be where we are today in the midst of the next phase of the quantum revolution, exploring fresh concepts and marching towards technologies thoroughly inspired by the quantum view of the world. Never did I dream that entanglement would move from theorists' curiosity to center stage, though I think I did know that Schrodinger had introduced the word Verschränkung, a kind of folding of the arms around 1935, to recognize the essentially quantal idea that the best possible knowledge of a whole does not include the best possible knowledge of its parts, which is how I like to introduce quantum mechanics on airplanes and at dinner parties. But that is the reality, and you and your colleagues in the field that you're advancing, that the reality that you're advancing every day is something that is keeping my love affair with quantum mechanics very much alive. And I thank you for that. There's absolutely no doubt that it's an exciting time for quantum science and technology with important progress in both theory and experiment, all the way from basics to applications, strong opportunities for funding and partnerships, including uh, established industries and startups, and the promise of truly remarkable support from the federal government on the horizon. Here at Stony Brook, we've developed a new multi-department quantum information science master of science program with theory and experiment tracks to support the workforce development needs of this growing field. And we'll be recruiting our first quarter of cohort of students very soon for next fall. And more generally, Stony Brook is committed to supporting quantum information science and technology as a priority direction, priority direction for Stony Brook faculty and students as well as through focused collaborations with universities, government, and industry. Well, let me wrap up with some thank yous to the various people and entities that are making our summit possible. Nina Mang and, the, uh, co and our colleagues in Stony Brook's Office of, the, of Proposal Development in the Office of the Vice President for Research, Department of Physics and Astronomy, the School of Professional Development, DOE's C2QA partnership and the various collaborations with Brookhaven in the areas of quantum computing and quantum communications, the NSF Quantum Leap Challenge Institute conceptualization grant in collaboration with the University at Buffalo, and of course, all the speakers and participants of this year's International Quantum Summer Summit. Well, that's enough from me. I'll close by wishing you an exciting, stimulating, rewarding meeting I urge you to engage, discuss, and wrestle with one another intellectually. And every now and then, do pause to remember how incredibly fortunate we are to have the quantum world as our playground.
Thank you.